Retired Air Force veteran Ed Ruckel, welcome to Open Channels, a weekly podcast for veterans, family members, and caregivers. My guest today is Eric Cooley from Veterans Benefits Evaluations. We're going to be talking about DBQs, not barbecues. Summer's over. DBQs at your disability benefits questionnaires. You're going to learn what they are, what they do, and why they're important. But before we do that, just a reminder, you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button down below, and always ring that notification bell, that way you never miss another one of my videos. Let's get started. Okay, Eric, so we're going to talk about disability benefits questionnaires, often referred to as VADBQs, and I don't mean BBQs for barbecuing steaks, right? I wish. So we're going to talk mm. about these DBQs, so why don't we just start with mm. what is a DBQ? Yeah, so um, whenever you go in and do a CMP exam with the VA, they need a standard way of evaluating the severity of your symptoms so that they can correlate the severity of your symptoms to the 38 CFR so they know how to rate you. And that is was accomplished with the DBQ. It's a standardized form that's used in all CMP exams. Keep in mind, you know, you have uh, multiple different contract companies. All CMP exams are done by contract companies, not the VA. So you've got LHI, QTC, um, and some of the others. I just, sorry, I can't think of the name of them right now. But they needed a standardized way of evaluating veterans to determine what the severity of their symptoms were and correlate that to the 38 CFR. So the rating officer would then know not whether or not something should be connected, but at what rate it should be connected. All right. So um, you'll recall we've talked about there's, you know, and it's so important. So I'm going to repeat this. There's, there's three things you have to have for the VA. You need a diagnosis. You need a nexus that links it to your time and service, and you need a severity of symptoms that would merit a rating. And that's what's being covered in that DBQ is, right. is they're determining what you should be rated. Yeah. Now, you mentioned those other three companies besides the VA having their own forms. Mm -hmm. uh, who are those people? Were they a part with a, a government organization or what were they? You know, I, I, I want to not tread too deep into to the the forest on that one um but the the knowledge the limited knowledge that i have of it is um at least qtc and i believe lhi but you know fact, fact check me dig into this you know for yourself whoever's watching this but they're actually former high level va employees they, they were c-suite oh, okay. people okay. over at the va and they why the VA transitioned from doing their own CMP exams to doing 100% contract, you know, that's a level of bureaucracy that I, I couldn't yeah, no wade into and explain why that is. But I do know that it's, you know, multi-billion dollar situation. So it worked out pretty well for these former VA employees to strike off and, and contract doing CMP exams for the VA. It's at least worked out well for them. It hasn't necessarily always worked okay. out well for the veteran. Now, that makes sense. So DBQs are, and I've looked at it, and I understand there's about 70 different DBQs out there currently. I think of the latest number I saw on the website uh, that are available under for varying conditions, right? Uh, and that, so we'll be talking a little bit about that as we go along. Mm -hmm. So basically, then you need a DBQ it, it's just one of the so, three. Here, let me actually, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump in right there. Yeah. Um, so to even say that you need a DBQ, really, it, it's a DBQ um, it is the standardized form that the CMP contract companies right. use so that there's consistency across the board and how veterans are evaluated and they can correlate the severity of those symptoms from the DBQ to the CFR. So they know, should you be rated at 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever the case may be. So the reason why I jump in there 
because you, you mentioned, well, you need a DBQ. It, where I would come from on that, where I, where I land in that discussion is to say, um, you need a DBQ from the perspective of, you want to do everything you can as a veteran to advocate for yourself and to be sure that you are representing your situation as, as well as possible. And so whatever you can do to get your own medical evidence from a third party person, whatever you can do to bring your own stuff to the table, that helps you um, when you are going to navigate a system um, in which you can very often just be another number, right? Sure. Sure. If 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 you file a claim for an increase, let's say you've got a knee that got service connected back in 1980 when you got out of the service, and you know your knee has gotten worse and you're living with pain, and you're like, man, I I, I want to file for an increase on this, and all you do is you go into the VA and you file for an increase. Well, the only evidence that you're going to have on your behalf is this DVQ that's done during the CMP exam. Right now. Maybe that will be enough, but what is to what what's to say that that person is going to put in the work? What if what if you're the person they're seeing before they're go, about to go on their lunch break, and they just rush you through it? You know, you're you're putting a lot of trust in the system's hands for your claim. You're abdicating responsibility for your claim and just kind of trusting the system and saying, "Well, we'll just see how the system works." And we know um, how common it is for veterans to feel like no in fact the system doesn't work at least it doesn't work as um as, as effectively as we think that it should so why should you get a dbq well it would be one part of a comprehensive claims package you want to make sure you're crossing all your t's dotting all your i's take the responsibility on yourself to go get a dbq you can get them for free online, all the DVQs that the VA uses are, are for free online, you can take that DVQ in to your primary care provider and you can ask them if they'll do an evaluation on you and they'll fill that form out. All right. Yeah. You well, know. you know, when we started to do that with all the veterans we work with, it's, a, it's actually a part of one of my veterans, Lieutenant Commander, retired, mm -hmm. uh, does that when he takes them down to the VA, gets them registered for VA healthcare, mm -hmm. gets them uh, signed up for uh, my healthy vet, the patient portal, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And he pulls, <clears throat> he pulls a a, a DBQ. I don't know how mm -hmm. he does that, but because uh, it is conditional, right? Based on some condition you think you have, right? Right. So, yeah. um, so uh, we know that's very important because veterans, uh, they they're not necessarily bore sighted on on something. They got a pain in their lower back. That's all they know. And yep. They're yep. going to go for it, right? Well, uh, yeah, and I and I and you see, for example, right now with what's been happening with the um, recent push in a lot of the claims that are associated with the PAC Act, right? Right, and you're seeing a lot of claims that are getting awarded because they're on the presumptive list and they cannot deny them. However, it's it's shocking how many of those claims are getting awarded, but awarded at 0%. Yeah, I think the number last time I heard was somewhere around 72, 77% are 0% service connected, which is not bad. But hey, you get treatment high for it. You get treatment for it. But I, but I see that as a pretty shocking, if that, if that is the case, I, th I think that that yeah. is pretty shocking because, you know, to me, I have a hard time believing that all that 72% of the people that qualify for this rating have symptoms that are so low that they only qualify for a 0% rating. I think well, really what happens is from the VA itself, that was out of national yeah. statistics. So that's only yeah. about a month or so ago. I think I read that one, but uh, that's well, the number. It's crazy. You, you, you said something though, that I think is really important here. And this is the other side of, of why getting DBQ is so important outside of the DBQ you get from the CMP exam. And you mentioned, for example, the, the veteran who has a, a lower back problem, and that's all they think about, right? Now, how well does a veteran know how to advocate for themselves when they're doing the CMP exam? What oh, symptoms do they know to talk about, right? You mentioned lower back. 
Well, what is he going to talk about? What is the what is the veteran here? What is the veteran going to talk about? They're going to talk about the pain they're experiencing, how their life is impacted by it. But you know what the VA is going to do? They're going to do some range of motion tests. Pain isn't a factor, right? How your life is impacted is not part of how the CFR rates it. It's what's your, what's your range of motion? What's your flexion, right? So uh, very often veterans don't even know how to advocate for themselves within the CMP exam. And so, hey, there's plenty of blame to go around always in life, sure. right? Sure. And, and I want to be very clear because some of the, the statements that I made might have sounded like, you know, I'm trying to throw shade on these CMP exams when I'm really, I'm more just speaking about the inefficiencies of bureaucracy and systems and why it's so important for you to take personal responsibility for, for, for the claim that you're putting together and, and really advocate for yourself and what you're seeking. And, and where I very often see veterans get hurt is, you know, you could take something really complex like PTSD, for example, right? And it's written it on, a on a scale from zero to 100%. So zero, 10, 30, 50, 70, 100. Those are the different things you can qualify for right. with PTSD. And it's a psychological condition. There's lots of nuances to it, right? But if you talk to the average veteran and they have PTSD, what are you going to hear about from them? What you're going to hear about from them are their life experiences, how their life is impacted by it. Right. right. I've been divorced or I've, you know, had angry outbursts. I've lost a job, whatever the case might be, it, nightmares, any number of things, ways that the PTSD impacts their life. But in terms of how it's rated, none of those things come into play. So there you are in the CMP exam. You're talking about how it's impacting your life. And the CMP examiner has no idea how, how to evaluate you or, or, or what you should be rated. So they just check boxes because that's all a DBQ sure, is, is they just check boxes. And so that's why it's so important for you to go and, and get third-party medical evidence for someone who understands what the VA is going to be looking for and knows the questions to ask you and knows how to dig into things. Because you have to trust. And I think that that's a big trust. I think You have to trust that the person doing the CMP exam is going to care as much about your claim as you should. Right. Right. And I don't know that that's I don't know that that's a fair thing to do because most people are just doing their job, right? Well, and you know you're absolutely right, and you hit on a really good point here, and that is, uh, we're putting in a new uh, portal for patient uh, to go in and extract information out of health records, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, they'll they they patients whether civilians or the veterans, right? It doesn't really matter. They all think to think alike, and that is they don't think about the causes of anything. And what happens is when you don't have the information, whether it's a DBQ, which really helps with that, right? You're bore mm -hmm. sighting down now on, on particular questions that could just very well qualify or disqualify your disability, if I'm cor correct in saying that. Mm -hmm. But more yeah. important, what, you, what they've got to realize is that when you have the information, you become empowered to make exactly. informed decisions. Yeah. If yeah. you don't Even, know, then that's exactly what's going to result. That's such a great point. And if all you did was download the DBQ ahead of, let's say you didn't even go so far as getting a DBQ filled out, but all you did was download the DBQ and review it ahead of time, and review the CFR, you're that much more empowered to do a good job advocating yourself in the CMP exam. And because you know, you, know, you know what you're going to be evaluated on, and so you know what you need to be talking about, right? I mean, it's not, it's not the veteran's fault that they don't know what to talk about. And also, it is the veteran's responsibility to make sure that they're doing a, a solid job and pursuing the benefits they're entitled to through their time and service. Right. And of course, a part of that is realizing that whoever is, is doing your DBQ, if, even if that's yourself, we know there's got to be some bias when you self DBQ. <laughs> mm -hmm. like better yeah, I don't think the VA will put much stock in. I mean, they, they don't say, put a lot of stock in. That. No, no. no. Why, why would they, right? Right. So exactly. they, they uh, uh, but but when you like I said when you don't have the information, you know ignorance isn't bliss. We already no. talked about that a couple of times now, right? It, it's well, bliss. and yeah, and and um, I believe that even though I would say 
getting a DBQ and submitting that with your claim is not a necessary element. It's never a necessary element because the VA will provide you with that in your CMP exam. The reason why I think that it's so important is our team of medical experts, they're all veterans themselves for, for one thing. Right. Um, and another thing is, is when you come and you work with someone like that, their goal, so first and foremost, you're hiring them to dig into this and figure out how you should be right. evaluated. And they bring the medical expertise to know what questions they should ask and, and how to assess what the severity of your symptoms are and how to properly fill out this DBQ. And um, I think that this is what was so important for me. And when, when we were setting up veterans benefits evaluations was that when, if you were interested in going and getting a DBQ for submitting your claim, and I looked at all the different services, um, there was nobody out there uh, that would actually see you, the veteran. What the, the way the process would work is you would get in touch with one of these companies and you would say, okay, you know, I'd like to get a DVQ filled out and everything would be done via the email. How well are you going to advocate for yourself in an email? How well are you going to be able to explain your symptoms? Sure, sure. If, and, and more than that, do you even understand what you're reading when you read a DBQ? Do you under, do you even understand the questions that are being asked in the DBQ? Do you understand the symptoms that are being referred to, like spatial disorientation and flexion and things like this? Do you understand what these terms mean? Do you know how to fill these things out? Do you know how to answer these questions, right? And so that's why when, when we were setting this up, it was so important to us that um, veterans have the opportunity to actually meet with a doctor or a physician's, physician's assistant, have some quality time with them. Not only does our team review your records and see what they can extract from your records that will be relevant, but they also meet with you and they do a deep evaluation with you and they, and they take their time in filling this out and making sure it's done the way it's supposed to be done. And, and, and our team is committed to, be, to doing this at the highest standards. They know how important this is and they're veterans themselves. They take this seriously because they know how seriously the VA takes this. Right. And then, you know, one of the words that, uh, that we should be using too is accredited people. You need, you got to have people who are qualified in what you can't go get your brother, Sam, because he's on no. your side. Right. Right. So you want to have like a VSO, you want to have a VSO yep. that's accredited, trained, mm -hmm. right. Yep. And qualified with the credentials to back up that DBQ. Yeah. Because you're yeah. right. And I think another important word that we need to play around with here, and that is service connected. Mm -hmm. Service connected yeah. has to put play into, and I think this is where you were going earlier when mm -hmm. we talked about VA PAC Act claims being submitted with a high percentage of zero rating coming back mm -hmm. service connected. And I yeah. think that's probably coming because they're leaning on presumably and of course, anyone with a zero percent knows it's non-compensable. You're not right. making any money, but you know you're not you're not you're not getting more money. Yeah, what it what it does, what the zero percent rating does is um it gets you coverage from the VA. There you go. Um and, and that can be value. However, if you're at a 50% rating, you already get health coverage from the VA anyway. Correct. So getting a zero, so getting a zero percent rating when you're already at fifty percent or above is irrelevant. And um, and, and I have to. So look, my my father was a Vietnam vet. My uncles were Vietnam vets, and I, I know um, through personal experience the struggles that Vietnam vets went through for getting any kind of treatment or recognition for Agent Orange exposure right, right. And, and how many Vietnam vets we lost that didn't get the care that they needed um, and, and how many spouses would have been receiving, you know, the, the survivor's benefits if the, if the veteran had been able to get the service they deserved, um, you know, years previously. It's been a real struggle. And I have to look at what's happening right now with the PAC Act and all these veterans getting these zero percent ratings and, and have to feel like it's a little bit disingenuous. This talk about, oh, all this great work that we're doing for veterans, we're going to help veterans get these claims. We're getting them and they're awarding these claims because now they can't deny them. They're, they're, they're prohibited from right. denying them because of this act, but they're giving them zero percent. That's, that's a bit disingenuous to say, look at all this good that we're doing. 
but we're giving everybody all these zero percent ratings. Now, um, again, I think a lot of this too boils down to the issue of veterans being somewhat checked out of the process. They they kind of just oh, they file the claim. Yeah, it's just kind of file the claim and pray and whatever they get. And then when they get really bad results, they curse the VA. And I understand. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a veteran. I'm a, a multi-generational veteran. Um, so I understand the impulse and also like everything else in life. Guess what? You got to take responsibility for the results you want to achieve. Right, right. And we know that they do not. Not all veterans right. do it. Some work very no. hard at it. And they yeah. ultimately and eventually do. And usually it pays off. And it usually pays off. So, you know, you have a tendency. Uh, one of the good movies uh, out there is Outlaw Josie Wales. And, oh, boy. Uh, We're going old school. Yeah. What a great movie. And when he was, when Clint was talking to the chief, Mm -hmm. And Chief said, well, we're going to continue to persevere. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Because they didn't answer my questions, but I'm going to, we're going to persevere. Yes. And that's one of the great lines and actually applies very well to VA disabilities, period. You, yeah. can, you have to continue. You got to take ownership. Yep. You got to go to those DBQs. Actually, it's no different than a fully functional uh, VA disability. Mm -hmm. You're actually building a fully documented, I like to have that term, actually yeah. better than functional, mm -hmm. uh, but a fully documented uh, case file in front of you, right, yeah. that leads to that service-connected disability percentage. Yeah, I mean, Whatever. you look, at the end of the day, look, if you want to put it in its most simplified terms, it's about proving your claim. It's about proving to the VA that what you're asking for is a valid thing to ask for. Right. Right? Because otherwise, if, if you can't do that, why should the VA award it? Every veteran out there would be running around at 100% rating if all it was was, well, I think I should be. Oh, yeah, well, every veteran. Should. So, so it's about what can you prove. It's not about what do you think. It's not about what do you feel. It's, it, frankly, it's not even about what, in fact, the reality of the situation was. The reality is, it's about what you can prove. How do you prove it? You prove it through medical evidence. And, and very go. often, this is a, a process. And so, so, so to your point about the, we will continue to persevere um, as much as possible. I do my best to, to instill on veterans' minds, like, it's not a one and done thing. You don't file for your disability claim when you're leaving, your, leaving the service and then forget about it for the rest of your life. Right. Keep up. Continue seeing the doctor, continue collecting that medicals, make sure you're staying on top of things. And you'll be able to make your life much easier when you do want to file for an increase because you'll have the medical evidence to help support it. And take advantage of um, everything that you can, every resource available to you um, that's you know fair and honest resource um, to, to put together a comprehensive claims package. Get those expert medical opinions before you file your claim. Because you know, um, is the VA going to take your word for it versus if you get a doctor who provides an expert medical opinion and explains, you know, what the diagnosis is that you have, how it's related to your service, and does a breakdown on the severity of your symptoms. I mean, you've just given the VA everything they need to satisfy those three requirements of a diagnosis, a nexus, and severity of symptoms that warrant a rating, right? It's a process. Right. And connect and correct me if I'm wrong here. And the, the analysis or the uh uh recommendations by the uh I don't even know if that's a good word, but I'll use it anyway. When you file for a disability that that's that's uh uh handled and uh, by an accredited uh physician, right? And that mm -hmm. can be VA physicians, it can be outside physicians, true. Mm -hmm. But you right. want that and that's one point. The other point is, is that veterans got to quit passing the buck yeah. and relying on other people to do what you should have done to begin with, mm -hmm. but you're not doing it. So don't gripe and complain, right? Yeah. That kind of thinking. So, yeah. So the, the, the one thing that I would add to that though is um, 
I, I, I agree with that. And also historically, veterans have not known what the work is they need, needed to do. They didn't know the rules of the game, so they right. didn't know how to play the game. Right? right. And so that's a big part of why our focus on all our social media platforms and all that is just giving education away. It's educating, educating, there educating, educating. You so, you know, what, here are the things you need to do. Here are the thing. Here's how to know whether or not you qualify for something. But, you know, how many veterans even know what a secondary claim was? I was out of the military for 10 years before I knew a secondary claim was a thing. Well, there you go. There you go. You so know, they're not doing their homework. Right. And that accounts for a lot. If you ask them, what have you heard about this, heard about that? They'll tell you, I never heard about it. Nobody told right. me. Then you tell them mm -hmm. and they still ignore it. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes. Oh, go figure, eh? Oh, my God. Yeah. That, yeah. That's just crazy. So uh, in beginning to wrap things up, we're doing really yes, good. Uh, let's recap a little bit. So in order to, why get a dbq let's recap on that one yeah yeah so um a dbq will be provided for you for free in your cmp exam that's what they're doing in the cmp exam they're filling out a dbq right. however if all you do is file for a claim and going into your cmp exam that will be the only evidence that will be submitted on your behalf so you're putting your entire the entire fate of your claim on that one CMP examiner and their ability and willingness to dig into what the severity of your symptoms right, are. Right. And by and large, you probably don't know what symptoms you should be talking about, right? I mean, migraines are a perfect example. People who suffer from migraines will talk about the pain they experience, the, the, the pain in their eyes, those kinds of things, possibly vomiting. But unless you use the magic keyword with the VA of prostrating, they won't know where to put you, right? So- right. These little things can 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 really help or hinder your claim. So why is getting a DBQ done so so important? Well, one, when you get a DBQ done by a third party provider, it's bringing in a medical expert who can provide an unbiased evaluation and has the credentials and the medical expertise to be able to speak to it with authority, right? And it's a part of putting together a comprehensive claim so that you can focus not just on winning the claim, but making sure you get it awarded at the appropriate rate, because it's it's kind of um, a, a win and a loss if you get something service connected, but it comes in at 0% when it could be awarded at 30% or 50%. Correct. Correct. Very good point. So let's walk through your process. A veteran comes to you, uh, mm -hmm. do you and do they say, hey, uh, Eric, I need a DBQ? So... We, we we do get a mix because we do work with clients who we do work with veterans who are currently working with an accredited attorney or an accredited agent or VSO. And so they might they might know what they need. They might know what the missing piece of the puzzle is. And they might just come to us and say, OK, hey, this is what I need. I need an evaluation on this. And if that's the case, they just kind of get fast tracked to the, to the medical team so they can get that service. But by and large, most veterans don't know. So they start with getting a benefits eligibility evaluation where they'll sit down with a member from our team and we'll help them figure out what potential benefits are available to them. All right. And in that process, we'll outline for them whether you need to get a Nexus letter or a DBQ or right. whatever the case may be. All right. right. And then mm -hmm. at that point, you know, okay, for this disability, I need a DBQ for this disability. I need a DBQ, whatever the case might be. And, and from there, we have a team of medical professionals that can do those DBQs for you. We can't do all DBQs, but we can do some. Um, and further, all DBQs are available online for free. And you, like I said earlier, you could always download a DBQ online, take your DBQ in to your private provider and ask them to fill it out for you. Sure. Now, can they download and send you that form already filled out? Exactly. They don't need to. We we take care of that. Oh, you take if they, care. It, it, yeah, if they want to get a DBQ, we, we we've got the DBQs, and, and if they've got a DBQ for some one of the services we provide, our medical team will take care of all of that. So your vet, the veteran just goes to veterans evaluate or a benefits evaluation. Veterans benefits evaluations. Yeah. Signs up, goes for yep. it. There's no charge up front. The, like the, the 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 charge is for the service provided. So you, right. you, when you get a DBQ, 
a medical professional, you know, a doctor or a physician's assistant, someone who's qualified to do it is going to review your records and they're going to meet with you. Their time is not free. They got families to feed as well. Right. So, but uh, getting a DBQ through through our process, it's, it's 300 bucks. Um, not very, not very expensive. Um, you know, I know that's relative, obviously, but, um, but when you think about the time that's involved in it, it's, it, you're, you're going to get some really high quality evidence that's going to help you put together a comprehensive claims package. And you're going to have expert medical opinions that are backing up what you're asking for versus just going into the VA and putting all of your, the outcome of your claim on the CMP examiner and, and hoping that that's going to go well. Correct. Correct. And you're assuring that with the people you deal with, which is even better. It's not pot luck here, right? Not right. Just to throw somebody on the wall and then pick one of those four or five people. You don't even know. No, no. Um, we've been very selective in the, the people that we work with, the doctors and the physicians assistants that we work with. And, you know, at this time, I think they're all veterans themselves. Right. So these, these are like people to... who, who, yeah, they're, these are people who are committed. And what I liked about your website, we talked about this a few times, and that is you have all of the information. They have a, they are fully educated before they make a decision to do anything. Absolutely. And there's Absolutely. very few sites that do that. They hold back, hold back, hold back, want to charge you for everything, but they don't tell you. And we talked about there are some lawyers out there that do that, and they do a very good job. But they've done yeah. the work up front. They're successful doing it. You guys are yeah. becoming successful. We're, we're, I, I think that, yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that. I think we're, we're very much aligned with some of the accredited attorneys that we see that are out there that want to do as much as they can to educate the veteran community yep. so they can make informed decisions. Because some of these outfits that are out there right now that are charging veterans just exorbitant fees, what they do is, is they prey on the fact that a veteran doesn't know. They, they don't they don't exactly. understand the system. Right. And so what they do then is to say, well, we know how it works. We're going to help you navigate it and they have you sign a contract. And you don't realize that in the end, if you go, you know, from a 50 percent rating to a 90 percent rating, that's an increase of about a thousand dollars a month. You're going to owe them five to six thousand dollars on top of the fact that guess what? Right. You still had to pay for the medical evidence. Yeah, you still you had to do that. We, That's what I liked about we've it. We just removed all of that. Yeah, that's yep. good. Well, listen, Eric, this is fantastic. Another good one down the pipe. They, Thank you, sir. Uh, put it down in the description below the video. Uh, and they can just click on that and go in and get educated and then make a decision. Excellent. Okay. That's the goal. Hey, Thanks so much, Ed. Hey, enjoy your day, my friend. Next Thank you, sir. Time, good seeing session, you. Same time, whatever. We'll pick a topic. Yeah.